Hello guys, Zpelfrain here, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now today, if you remember to the last video, in which I was a little sick, I'm not really all that happy with that video, we have a ton of new parts available to us now. So if you look in the propulsion, we have the smaller engine, the LVT-45, which is... The max thrust is 200 as opposed to the 215. Not a whole lot of difference, but I believe this is also thrust vectoring and the other one wasn't. Which means it should give us a significant, uh, significantly higher amount of control on our spaceship. We have this little tiny engine for use in landings. We also have the larger rocket, solid rocket booster. A thrust of 315, which is quite a bit. The Separatron, which I haven't actually used a whole lot of. I believe we had all these fuel tanks. We may have gotten this new one here. Still nothing in the control section. Still nothing new in the structure. Utility, we now have landing struts. Just tiny ones, but we have them. And... Mark II radial mount parachutes, meaning we can mount them on the sides of our rockets now, which is always useful. So we'll start out with our standard command pod. There we go. Let's throw on a decoupler onto that. Not the sub-assembly, it's this one. Throw a parachute on top of that, just to get that module there. Now. Got a little bit close to the mic there, sorry if I peeped it. The idea now, we do have everything we need to get to the moon from Kerbin. Believe it or not, I have gotten to the moon with less. It's just not the easiest of things to do at this point. But, I'm willing to give it a shot. So we'll put that there that on the bottom and then I do want to throw some of these off on the sides just for a little bit of extra fuel and do we have the thing no we don't I'm not sure if that'll work actually without the fuel line thing in the jigger okay never mind we'll just throw another one of these on here that should be more than enough to land us, right? Yeah, should be fine. We've only got the uh, linear decoupler, we'll call it. The stack decoupler, as opposed to the radial mount decouplers, which blow things off the side. So we're just going to throw that in the bottom there. In terms of control, we don't really have a whole lot. Uh, let's put that there, like so. That should be good for a rough landing. Actually, that might actually blow the engine to the ground. Let's lower it a little bit. I'm not sure how far they stick out. Never really used the small ones. Okay, there's our lander. Just a note to all of you, this is probably not going to work. Just letting you know that now with no RCS but we're gonna give it a shot and hopefully it'll work and I am not guaranteeing anything let's go ahead and throw some of these on just for a sudden either deceleration or acceleration depending on where we need them Uh, hmm. Yeah, we definitely want these in a separate stage that we may or may not completely skip if, if necessary. But we'll, we'll probably actually use them. We might use it to get off the moon. So we can always use that extra little bit of thrust. Anyway. I'm a little sidetracked. Let's throw one of those on the bottom there. 
Now, let's throw another decoupler. Let's throw, we're not going to put a whole lot right here. Actually, we kind of need to because we don't have radial decouplers. I always forget that. But we do have solid rocket boosters that we're not going to use. This is already seeming like a terrible idea, guys. Why are we doing this? This rocket is way too tall. Okay, this will work fine. Trust me. I'm an expert. I've done this hundreds of times before. Or maybe like once. It's, it's happened before. I've done it before. In theory. It'll work. It'll work. Trust me. Uh, we also want some of these things. Not a whole lot. Just, just the two will do. And let's throw some antenna on here. Because you can never have too many antenna. Okay. This may or may not get stuck on the moon, or not even make it to the moon. We'll find out. What should we title this? Let's just title it Apollo. Mark 1. It seems fitting to me. Should be a period there. Let's save that. The Apollo Mark 1, and let's let's give it a shot. I'm not expecting this to work, guys. Probably should have checked the staging, too, to make sure everything's staged correctly. Let's open up the Resources tab. We are a little shaky there. Put SAS on. Okay, all five are in that bottom stage. Uh, I actually hit space and nothing happened. Five, four, three, two, one. That is a loud rocket. I can't actually hear myself right now. But the good news is we are going up. Which is always good. Skipping the audio there, but that's fine. Moving up at a increasing rate. going. That's nicer. Okay, we're getting it up very quickly. Okay, let's blow that stage. Let's get pointed over completely perpendicular here. Perpendicular is the word I'm looking for? I believe it's the word I'm looking for. Okay, just gonna struggle a little bit there. There's where I want to be. Now, next stage. Moon's over there, so we don't quite want to blast off just yet. Just want to establish a decent orbit. Oh, we're already at a decent height for an orbit, so let's wait until we hit that max height. 
And then we'll add in this maneuver here just to get us circular. That went overboard a little bit. Let's pull that back down. That, you see how the periapsis and the apoapsis switch is a good sign that they're pretty equal in altitude. That's 111,000 meters and this is 116,000 meters compared to the 114, which is our max height that we're reaching. So just keep that in mind when you want to establish orbits using this method. I usually don't, but it gives us something to do while we get to this point. Uh, let's actually make sure we're pointed in the right direction. Do we have fuel in this stage for that? We should. I don't know about the getting back part, but for the getting to the moon, we've got that covered. <clears throat> now, when you're looking at your orbit here, and you've got the moon here, you usually want to aim about a quarter of an orbit of the moon out from where it's rotating. And usually, you'll hit the moon about that area. That's the general thing I've found. I can't give you exact numbers because I don't know them. But about a quarter of an orbit is where you want to aim. So from where I am, I'm actually a little past, so I'd pop out here. Ideally, I'd want to accelerate from here so the orbit pops out that way. You always accelerate on the opposite side of the thing from where you want to go. Okay, let's throttle up. See if we can't establish that orbit. We're already a little past the burn node. Okay, let's go in, get rid of that. Just a little bit. There we go. That orbit's flying out a lot faster now. It'll work perfectly, assuming we have the fuel. We may not have the fuel required, but it looks like we will. Okay, getting ready. And there we go. Perfect orbit actually see 136 75 that is a little low but hey whatever it's still above the required minimum so let's pull the time warp up a little bit maybe a little bit more so we can get over to where we want to be at this point we want to accelerate out from about here Let's actually add in a maneuver there. Pull that orbit out here, like so. Let's slow down the time warp just a little bit. Pull that out just to elongate our interaction with the moon there as long as possible. There will be under its influence for a decent encounter. Part of that, two hours. Ish. What is that? 11 hours, 3 minutes. 13 hours, 57 minutes. So just about 3 hours. So let's pull the warp back up. We are going to be pushing it a little bit with the fuel we have left. The estimated burn time is 28 seconds, which is quite a bit for the amount of fuel we have left. We may not actually have the fuel to complete this burn, we might have to go to the next stage, but that's fine, we should have more than enough fuel in that stage, because it's also a lighter stage and a smaller engine. And if worse comes to worse, we have those, those big things. Yeah, right there. So, let's pull the warp up a little bit. 
A little bit more. We've still got three minutes left. And as you can see, your your orbit will be approaching directly at the moon. It's a pretty good uh, idea of where you should be aiming for. We got a nice curve out of the out of Kerbin's influence there. Nope, we just went overboard a little bit. Let's get rid of this, and there goes that stage. So we'll go in here, pop that stage off, start the next stage, careful to watch our fuel levels. As you can see, it is pushing us out at a significant rate without using too much fuel. Because again, this whole stage is going to be a lot lighter. You know, we may have used too many of those little booster rockets for an effective landing. So they probably put out enough force to completely launch us out of orbit. So here we are. We're approaching that intercept. Let's give it just a little bit more. There we go. Plenty of time. And it looks like we're going to completely circle it. Although, we may actually circle within the surface of the moon, because that looks like a pretty tight orbit there. So let's hope we don't hit it. Although, if we do, it that is kind of our plan, was to come in contact with the surface of the moon. Just probably a little slower than we're going to be hitting it at. Which is why we have those engines. Okay, we should have plenty of fuel for this. Here we are, the moon's coming up on us, we're coming up on that intercept. very soon, very quickly. And in three, two, one, one and a half. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, we are going through the surface of the moon there. So, this will pull us down to the surface. So we don't actually have to adjust our orbit, it will pull us directly in. We're just going to have to adjust the closer we get to the ground to make sure we're actually pointing straight down. <clears throat> so not too much longer. Let's go to this view and see if we can find it. There it is. Where no Kerbin has gone before. Good news also is we're going to land on the light side of the moon. I've had plenty of landings where we landed on the dark side and you can't see anything. So this should be a lot nicer for us. Yeah, we're approaching quicker. We are hitting speeds that don't necessarily want to be hitting. Currently at 563 meters per second. So let's completely decelerate down to zero. Let's point our rocket away from the moon. We're just going to give a quick burn, just to slow ourselves down a little bit. Maybe get our landing more in a straight down fashion. Just a tiny burn. Just 
just to slow us down just a little bit. We're not using too much fuel here. That should be slowly bringing this in. I don't really want to land in that crater. That crater doesn't look fun to land in. It's too dark. Okay, let's just throttle that down. Back to zero. We'll accelerate time a little bit more just to get ourselves a little closer. I'm pretty much getting impatient is what's happening, guys. Here we are, coming in. The moon is getting bigger. We got a nice view of the dark side of Kerbin. Nice uh, slice of Kerbin there. There's a technical term for that, and I can't remember it. Crescent, crescent. That's that's the word. Okay, we're coming up. Let's pull time back down. Point back this way. Throttle up just a little bit again. Maybe a little bit more. Now you'll notice we are accelerating as we approach the moon. Now if you're very good, you can actually use that to accelerate yourself out of the system. That's what's called a slingshot in space terminology. And yes, that is the actual term. And that can actually get you to other planets a lot easier. You'll see NASA does that a lot with their probes to get out to other planets like Pluto, Jupiter, those types of planets. They'll slingshot around either our moon or the Earth itself just to get that extra little bit of momentum they want and that extra tiny little bit of speed. Alright, let's take that off again. Going to pull time back up as we come in. Let's see where our landing point is going to be. Okay, we can work with that. I don't quite like the angle, but I can deal with it. Take SAS off and... Oh, right, we need to pull that down before we can do anything with where the ship is pointing. Just trying to keep it pointed straight down. Alright, let's accelerate a little bit. Oh, having some camera issues as we orientate ourselves in the direction of the moon. Okay, and here's where things start to get interesting. You can see we're currently going 700 meters per second. That's pretty fast. That's probably significantly faster than these landing legs can actually take. So, let's try to keep ourselves pointed down. Try to keep the acceleration going uh, opposite to the direction we're falling in. So that will allow us to fall more in a straight down fashion as opposed to a sideways fashion. Because landing legs work best when all of them are touching the ground. Not just one or two. <coughs> Here we are, 32,000 meters off of the surface of the moon. You'll also notice that we don't have a ladder for the Kerbal to exit the capsule from. It's a small oversight that our engineers are going to have to look at, but the EVA suit, the EVA rockets, should be enough to boost him up to the level of the cockpit. Ok, 
Okay, let's throttle up just a little bit. We're at 19,000 meters and approaching faster than I'd like to. Okay, let's throttle up a little bit more. We're approaching significantly faster than I'd like to at this point. Let's pop the gear down. Okay, we're all the way up. Okay, guys, fire in these. happened. We just blew up a Kerbal. Who did we blow up? I didn't decelerate fast enough, guys. We just lost a Kerbal. And look at those parts fly. Oh, they flew into a crater, so there's no place for them to land. Well, we made a few mistakes there. Mistake number one was not decelerating quickly enough. There we go, there goes those parts. Mistake number two... I don't actually know what mistake number two was. We, we made... we didn't decelerate quick enough. That was pretty much our only mistake. Those other rocks didn't actually do a whole lot. Let's throw some more on next time. Just in case. We'll, we'll do it in like separate stages. Uh, okay. Well... Here we go. Jebediah. We killed Jeb, guys. No more Jeb for us. Hmm. I don't actually realize this stuff was here. That's pretty neat. Okay, well... We are now a Kerbal Short. So, with that, I'm going to leave you guys here. In the next episode, when we get over the loss of Jeb, we'll try again. We'll do things a little bit more by the book this time. Might throw a few extra stages on there. We'll get it done. Jeb will not have died in vain. Remember to like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.